Welcome everyone to Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Beechler, and as you can see from all the blue, we are the first weekend of Advent. And Advent is a season of preparing our hearts for Christmas. And today we'll have a very special Advent sermon about preparing our hearts by understanding the wonder of God's love. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here in this first weekend of this Advent season. Help us to use this season to draw close to Jesus, our Savior. In his name we pray, amen. stand for this opening part of worship. We begin this encounter with God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But to come into God's presence, we must first come with humility, confessing our sins and believing in the good news of the gospel. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Let us consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be mercifully a sinner. We take a moment of silent confession. Together we confess, Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As part of the Advent community, we now greet one another with the peace of the Lord in person or online. with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will love you. I will praise you. I will serve Mom, Dad, I'm pregnant. You think she said it like that? <laughs> Almost like, here it is, deal with it. And by the way, your grandson, he'll be the son of the most high God. <laughs> yeah, how, how do you even say that? <sighs> the angel told her not to be afraid. And Mary, well, we know she was faithful. So maybe, maybe she just decided to believe him. That whatever was about to happen, she was gonna be okay. When do you think she realized that she hadn't accidentally found herself in this situation, but she'd actually been chosen for it? Because when you know that you're chosen, that's when you know that you're loved. And when you're loved, well, that gives you the kind of confidence you need to walk through doors everyone else wouldn't dare go through. But Mary dared. She dared to trust God as she watched him give life, then give it up for our sakes. And it all, in the unforgettable miracles and the very scary moments, she trusted his will rather than demanded answers, walked forward instead of turned back, stepped out instead of hit. Kind of makes you want to be like that little girl, huh? So do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests.
Our first Bible reads from the book of Romans, chapter 13. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer now than we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then cast off works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, nor sexual morality or sensuality, not in quarrels or jealousy, but put on Christ Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Here ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson for this day is taken from Luke chapter 1. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country, to a town of Judea. He entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, a baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greetings came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believes that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Here ends our gospel reading. We now make our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to the season of Advent, and for this Advent season, we are looking at the wonders of Christmas, and today, we're going to start with the wonder of love, how much love has been shown to us uh, during the Christmas time. Uh, so often, we just focus upon the trivial things, and lots of us here know some very trivial things about the Christmas season, and here's a little test to see how smart you are. Uh, question number one, what did the other reindeer not let Rudolph do because of his shiny red nose? Do you remember? Play in reindeer games. How many ghosts are there to Christmas Carol? It is four. In Home Alone, where were the Callisters going on vacation, leaving Kevin behind in his house? It is Paris. Uh, the classical Christmas movie, uh, The Grinch Told Christmas, how did they describe the Grinch? Stink stank, stunk. And then in A Wonderful Life, what happens when a bell is ring? An angel gets its wings. And finally, in the song Winter Wonderland, who do they pretend the snowman is? You remember this? It is Parson Brown. And so we have all these trivial ideas about Christmas in our mind, and they're okay, but we really need to focus upon the importance of Christmas, that it is a not a really holiday, but a holy day. And today I want you to think about what Christmas is about, to be curious about those events that split up our calendar between A.D. and B.C., about God visiting planet Earth. What was Mary thinking and what was God thinking that very first Christmas? Now, one author said this, curiosity may have killed the cat, but being curious is one of the traits that can help people experience the love of God and the relationship God desires us to enjoy with Him. Staying curious when we read and hear the story from the Bible, such as the birth narratives of Mary and the baby Jesus, can open up new perspectives and understanding of the wonder of Christmas in a new way. So come with me and wonder anew about this amazing event 
that we focus upon here at Mount Calvary, the wonder of God's love. And our big idea for today is this, I want to renew your curiosity about the Christmas story and the wonder of the love of God, about angels visiting planet Earth. So let's get into our text for today from Luke chapter 2. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And we've heard the story, we've read the story hundreds of times. And sometimes we lose the wonder of what is taking place. So let's regain some of that wonder by some curious questions. Questions like, how did Mary share the news of her pregnancy with their parents? Questions like, how did the divine message from the angel to this teenage mother-to-be impact the way she related to her God? Or questions like, did she view the birth of this baby as something that bothered a normal plan in life? You see, so often we miss that, those curious ideas. And for many people, Christmas is a season that's more of a hassle than a source of joy and wonder. For many people, this time of year is a source of stress. Is it for you? It is a time of pressure, not pleasure. Is that for you? And for many, it's a duty, not a delight. And so many enter Christmas rather with wonder. They enter with regret. They enter with a thing to be endured. And for many, Christmas season is a struggle with grief. And so here at Mount Calvary, we're doing a, a special program of surviving the holidays. And we are talking to our church members about how to survive the grief of the holidays. And here are some poor, uh, important ideas that we are presenting at a special seminar that some people have found the following very helpful to deal with their grief holiday. And for some, it is placing a space at their table on Christmas to acknowledge the person they love who is not there. Others light a candle. Some shape take short walks in remembrance. Some set aside a, a time to reminisce and share the memories of their loved one. Some create holiday uh, scrapbooks and memories and they bring them on out. For others, it is an ornament on the tree or a wreath on the door. Some make a donation in the memory of their loved one every Christmas season or set up a memory table with pictures and mementos and notes. Uh, one pastor who lost his son at age 16 every year would hang up his stocking and would write his son a note about that year. And the other families would write notes too and they put him in the stocking and the notes would stay there to the following year. And so Christmas is a time to show your love. And one of the ways we show our love is by remembering people that are not with us. And this is one way to uh, help with some of the stresses of Christmas. But what does the Bible say about Mary in response to that first Christmas? When the angel came to her and said, Mary, you're going to have a baby. Look at Mary's response. Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And that word servant that Mary uses is a very special word. It means bond servant. It's a term that denotes a person who voluntarily sells themselves into being a lifelong servant to another. Sometimes to pay a debt, sometimes to avoid poverty. Mary uses that word bond servant to show her complete submission to the will of her creator. She has voluntarily sold herself out to God because she knows that God will pay her debt, because she knows that God will lay upon her the riches of faith and hope and eternal life. Mary is saying, I will commit myself unconditionally to the service of the Lord. 
And so that is the curious thing about Mary. We see her as a willing servant. Uh, reminds me what we preached about in Romans chapter 12 last week. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. We are to follow in the pathway of Mary. Lord, we are your bondservants. Use us here this year. And that leads to a very interesting life point. Submitting your life to God is an adventure, but it's not a picnic. Being, it brings meaning to life, and you have purpose as you serve God and serve others, but it is not easy. And, but Mary willingly submitted herself to this great adventure of faith, this adventure that she would be made fun of and mocked for being pregnant without being married. She would have to suffer a long trip while she is pregnant and go to a town where nobody wanted her. She would suffer by seeing her son die on a cross. And yet through all this, Mary's response was, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be to me according to your will. And so think about Mary and wonder about Mary and her faith as she rides into Bethlehem and there's no room in the inn. But her thoughts were, behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Ponder Mary giving birth to the Messiah in a barn among the farm animals. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Ponder Mary who would see her son, whom she loved so much, suffer and die and be wrapped again in the white swaddling clothes and laid, not in a manger, but in a tomb. And she would think, behold, I am a servant of the Lord. God brought her along this great adventure. It wasn't a picnic. It was an adventure of faith that tried her many times. And so God is calling us too to go on an adventure of faith. And so are you curious about Christmas? Are you curious about this adventure that God wants to send you on? Are you curious about being a bond servant of God? Will you voluntarily sell yourself to God as a lifelong servant because he has paid your debt, because he has given you riches? If so, this is the month to give your life over to the will of God in your life, to give your life over to your creator. And that begins by using the things taking place in the next few weeks to grow your faith. Try to be in worship twice a week, on Sunday and on Advent. Daily pray, daily read this book, the Bible, and then daily think about what acts of kindness will you do today? Who needs a note? Who needs a phone call? Who needs a little bit of help? And then do those acts of kindness. Give your life away to God in service to others. Wouldn't life be different as a bond servant of God and to wonder about God's love, to make these next four weeks not just holidays, but holy days as you and God travel together? That's what Advent is all about. And again, you can join us for Advent services on Tuesdays at 6.15. Uh, we'll try to have them online also. So be curious about this woman, Mary, and her walk with faith. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to be according to your word. And then be curious as to why God showed up as a baby. While they were there, says Luke, the same time, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And why is God bringing us Christmas? because God wants to teach us about himself. You can see we can learn about God's power from creation. God in the book of Genesis said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw there was light and the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness and God called the light day. Uh, through uh, astronomers, we can understand that our universe is I think 95 billion light years across and getting bigger. A light year is how far light travels in one second, 186,000 miles. 
Thus a light year is a 5.88 trillion miles. God did it all with just speaking his name. That is a powerful God. Uh, we can learn about God, about a variety of creation, how God made this amazing variety of earth, of uh, life here on planet earth. I don't know if you know this, but no two human beings are exactly alike, not even twins. God does not make copies. Every one of us is an original. And again, think about all the life forms, how different they all here on earth. We see God's creativity. And we can learn about God's love of beauty and the gift of his creation when we look around us. We can see colors, we can taste different foods, we can smell and touch and experience the beauty of God. Uh, here's just one beautiful duck. I don't know what duck this is, you can probably tell me. But again, you can see what God is like by looking at the beauty of his creation. But not until Jesus arrived here on earth did we understand the limit, unlimitedness of God's love. You see, God's love loves to create things. And we know that God loves people even more. And so God invaded earth as a person. Wonder about that. Wonder about that God wanted to show how much he loved you by becoming a human being. Uh, one author said this, the love of God for people so compelled him to make the first move in manifesting his love towards the people that he, he would come in the form of a baby. The Old Testament prophecies called Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us. Every year, Christmas is talking about God is with us, that God loves us, and it is a personal love. You see, it doesn't say that God has love, but that God is love. And love is the essence of God's character. And the reason that everything in the universe exists is because God wanted to love it. And that means you exist for God to love. Wonder about this idea. You were created as an object of God's love. And God showed you his love by becoming a person. And this is why we have Christmas. And as we ponder God's love, then we seek to live out loving lives also. Reminds me of a book of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. You all know this, book, this uh, part of the Bible. It is about love. And somebody took 1 Corinthians 13 and applied it to the Christmas season. And I thought this was really cool. Uh, listen to this. If I decorate my house perfectly, with padded bowls, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny balls, but have not love, I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen baking dozens of Christmas cookies, prepare gourmet meals, and arrange a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not have love, I'm just another cook. If I work at the soup kitchen and carol in the nursing home and give all that I have to charity, but not have love, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shiny angels and uh, crocheted snowflakes and attend a myriad of holiday parties and sing in the choir's cantina, but not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cook from cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the spouse. Love is kind, though hurried and tired. Love does not envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and Christmas linens. Love does not yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful that they are there to be in the way. Love does not give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who cannot. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, Love never fails. Toys will be broken, pearl necklaces will be lost, golf clubs will rust, but giving the gift of love will endure. And that is the wonder of Christmas, that God gave us his love, that God became a person. And so I pray that you'll be curious and rethink about God's gift. Think of this 
not as a holiday, but as holy days. That is, uh, John wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, Christmas is to wonder about the most expensive gift you have ever received. It is priceless. It is the Jesus who paid for your life. Nothing you ever receive or will ever receive will be expensive as the blood of Jesus Christ for you. And Christmas is about receiving this gift that will last forever. God's love will ask, last forever. It will go on and on and on and on for all eternity. And it's an extremely fresh, practical gift. It is one that you can use every day for the rest of your life. The rest of your life, you can talk to God and have God talk to you and then be used by God to help other people. Wonder at this Christmas gift that is expensive, eternal, and practical. So renew your idea about Christmas and the Christmas story, the wonder of God's love. Take a look once again at what Mary did and how she lived a life of faith and what God did for you. Be curious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I encourage you to stand. We are speaking to the creator of the universe who in wondrous love has called us his children. We pray. Lord God, we thank you for this Christmas story that we are reliving once again. Help us to be curious about the people in it and how they responded to your arrival. And let us be very curious about why you love us so much. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. We pray, Lord God, that you'd help us to make this not a holiday season, but a holy day season, that we will take time out each and every day to spend time with you and to worship you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Gwen Walters and her family, the death of Timmy. We thank you for his life, for his amazing ability uh, to play and lead music. Uh, be with the family as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Caroline Crater as she continues to grieve the death of her mom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Continue to be with Lynn Komar as she is disabled. And we ask that you would help her to uh, find your hope and joy in this Christmas season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray once again for Melissa for healing from her stroke. Be with her husband and with her children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord God, each one of us here knows somebody who could use a little prayer right now, a friend, a family neighbor, someone that just needs your touch. In this moment of silence, hear us now as we pray for people that you lay upon our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So be with us now as we travel the journey of Advent. As we await the second coming of Jesus, let us ponder anew that first coming on Christmas. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Parish announcements. Uh, this is the first Sunday of Advent. Our first midweek Advent service will be on Tuesdays at 6.15. You can come early at 5.15 for a soup supper and fellowship and making Christmas ornaments. 
And then we gather together after church for refreshments. And we'll be doing this every Tuesday leading up to Christmas. Also want to thank all those who brought their Christmas boxes for Samaritan's Purse. We were able to send over 100 boxes out this year, and what a blessing that is. And if you need to talk to me or a prayer from your pastor, know that you can call the church office and you can get in contact with me and be glad to call you and talk with you and to pray with you. Well, it's now time to take this message of God's wondrous love out into the world. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.